So this is a guy that says for therapists working with sex workers. Working with sex workers. Or here they have sex workers or sworkers is something they say a lot. So they are arguably the cru crux of most cultures, offering a service that is uniquely intimate. They are a part of every social cultural makeup, yet denied sometimes as existing and sometimes as deserving, especially as deserving basic worker rights. International Sex Workers Day, or International Whores Day, was on June 2nd. This day was a recognition established in 1975 by a group of French sex workers that brings attention to the inhumane working conditions for people in this profession. So you can read more about the history of them and the fight for sex worker rights. Um, I might actually look into that into a video. So I'm defining sex workers here as people who have sex for money. Those who have private websites, work in porn stores, operate phone sex lines, do erotic body work and massage, do tantric work, work in sex clubs, provide girlfriend, boyfriend, friend experiences, work for porn companies on or off camera, and or have figured out other creative means to work in this industry um, is not listed here. So voluntary sex work shouldn't be lumped in with sex trafficking. It would be remiss for me not to mention the complication with sex work. For some, it's involuntary and for others, it's chosen profession. There's a big difference between voluntary sex work and sex trafficking. Politically, the powers that want to merge these two categories together to demonize sex workers along with sex trafficking world. Some individuals are sex trafficked and induced by force, fraud, or coercion to engage in a commercial sexual act, a terrible problem we are facing in modern society. Sex trafficking is a product of the patriarchy, just as much as the merging of it with sex works is. They are very different. I actually remember I did an article on for an English class for my college on why I think prostitution actually should be legal. So laws affecting sex work and their effects. A pair of laws were passed in 2018 to combat sex trafficking. The Allow States and Victims to Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act and the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act. The bills were an attempt to shut down websites that facilitate sex trafficking, but also harmed at will workers and their ability to work by hindering their online infiltration. So both of these, FOSTA and SESTA, made websites legally liable for any content that helped facilitate sex trafficking or prostitution, even if it was consensual, according to a PBS slash NPR article. The American Civil Liberties Union notes human trafficking persists because workers employed in certain professions are excluded from some labor and employment laws, sex work included. International Sex Workers Day seeks to highlight the exploitive and risky elements of the industry and promote justice for these workers. As a result of FOSTA and SESTA passage, not only has the financial stability of workers decreased, but also sex workers have been pushed back into the streets. This has pushed some back into the stronghold of pimps, patriarchal danger at its finest the gaslighting promise of safety. But typically that safety from outsiders comes from an absence of safety from the pimp themselves. Furthermore, there's an increase in workers' exposure to violence because pre-screening clients can no longer occur. Sex work has been thriving for all, all of time, and that's not changing. People choose sex work as a job for many different reasons, as people choose to be plumbers, Wall Street execs, and teachers. There can be flexibility, ability to earn higher wages, and a creative edge to the work. Providing mental health, providing mental health services for sex workers. Having access to health services, physical and mental, are imperative 
in this industry. Just like anything else. I used to work at St. James Infirmary in St. Francisco. So that's the person who actually wrote this. I'm just reading it. A client where a clinic where sex workers obtain health services as well as social services and food and clothing as needed. I provided counseling and coordinated services and saw how essential such a place was to the well-being of many. I also ran mindfulness groups and smoking cessation groups for sex workers through the Mason Center, teaching basic mindfulness skills that could be used on the job and the rest of life. Mindfulness provides a pause from automatic behaviors and thought patterns, offering space to pay attention to the present moment without judgment. The group continues to have an online meetup space. So it's very important. Um, and this is all about really changing our perspective. So the work of sex workers has mostly lived in the shadows. This social cultural mirrors where we hold sexualness and the expression thereof in the shadows. Given basic and rightful support to sex workers is just the correct action to take, just as we give that support to nurses, therapists, and performance artists. But that will require people to take a look at and assimilate their own sexual needs, selves, and proclivities. We don't live in a world that seems to be ready to own and celebrate that. Denying sex workers accessibility and rights denies the collective. There are very real issues specific to sex workers, and I don't think the psychological community does a good job of addressing them. Empowerment by way of accessibility is essential.